Hello there, my name is James Gibson and welcome to my fifth tutorial uh, uh, for Visual Basic 2010 in which we're creating a basic calculator as kind of an opening project for new programmers. Anyway, so in this particular tutorial is actually going to be quite a short one. We're just going to be dealing with one button in this tutorial, uh, which is the uh, clear button, which is going to reset our calculator. Now, I'm just going to zo uh, zoom up here, and we're just going to take a look at what we did last time. So this is what we took care of in our last, uh, our last tutorial, uh, which was one of the operations buttons. So this is your multiply, divide, add, add or subtract buttons. Uh, and uh, basically, it's a set of uh, instructions which are going to save the uh, the first input that we that we that our program experiences. So if we're doing five times four equals twenty, it's going to save the value five into our program to retain it. It's going to then change the label on our design, which is right here, uh, to read second value as just a prompt to the user. Then it's going to clear off the text box by a, by saving an empty string to it. So that's going to cause this uh, our, our calculator screen to go blank. Then we're going to turn on and off some buttons. First off, we're going to enable the decimal and negative number buttons, which are these two right here, which may have been used in our previous examples, uh, which were designed to turn off after being used one time, uh, th thereby preventing anyone from doing like negative negative five point 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 zero eight. Um, or any sort of strange values like that. So we made these two buttons right here uh, turn off once they were used. So we're just flipping those ones back on, and we're doing that by saying by using the enabled flag on uh, on those particular buttons. So button ten dot enabled equals true. Um, uh, we'll turn on that button if it happened to be turned off. It's right if it happened to be turned off. It has no effect if it's already been turned on. So it's uh, just fine to use it that way. Uh, next, we're going to turn uh, on the equals button. This, uh, therefore, people can't just start up the calculator and hit equals, which wouldn't give us any sort of meaningful result. So we decided to cut that back by uh, by in, uh, disabling that button at the start of the program, uh, and now it's enabled here. Lastly, we're going to turn off all of the other uh, all of the other operations buttons, which can be found here, uh, thereby to prevent anyone from going five negative negative nine or six plus plus negative divide five anything like that uh, we're cutting it down by turning off these buttons once they've been used once as well all right and lastly we set the operations variable which is the uh, variable which will instruct the equal sign which we'll be doing in our next uh, tutorial uh, to uh, which tells it which mathematical operation to go ahead and process so when we have our like such as our example uh, by the time the equals is pressed uh, the program will already know it's we're doing five times four. We know enough to actually do that calculation and come up with the final answer. Um, but the equal sign needs to know what kind of operation we're doing. And the operation variable is going to tell it uh, if it's going to be a multiply, a divide, an adding, or a subtracting. All right, so let's get on to what we're doing today. So we're doing the today we're doing the clear button, uh, which is simply designed to reset our program to its uh, starting parameters so that um, it can... Uh, go ahead and abort uh, a partially finished calculation uh, and uh, uh, also reset the calculator once we've finished a successful one. So we're going to start off with uh, clearing off any back uh, in, any information we've got stored in the background of our program. So what we're going to do is we're going to clear off first and second, the two variables that store our values uh, in our uh, number example, 5 times 4 equals 20. This is the storage for the 5 and the storage for the 4. And we're both we're just going to erase anything that's in there. And the way we erase those is simply by writing first equals, so this is our, my first variable, and I'm making equal, it equal to 0. Same thing for the second. My second, vari my, my second input variable is known as second. So I'm saying second equals 0. So that clears off both that clears off any information that might be saved in there that could potentially cause problems for us down the line. Next up, I'm going to reset the label of our uh, of our program. So that's the one you can see right here. And I'm going to reset it to say first value, uh, just like you can see right here. Uh, there's the potential that it could be reading second value at this point. So we're just resetting it to say first value. So we're going to just have uh, label one dot text. 
equals second value. Oh, first value. Okay. Okay. So there's that one done. Next up, we're going to reset the text box. And this is to clear out uh, any information that might be stored in here at this particular moment. Um, so uh, just if, if there's a partially finished number in there and something hits clear, we're just going to be sure to erase that so there's nothing there to get in the way. And we're just going to write simply text box one dot text equals a, an empty pair of quotes. Uh, this is because the text box one dot text um, property uh, takes a string of characters as its uh, as its data. So uh, if we want to save nothing to that screen, uh, we're just going to create a pair of empty quotes, an empty string of characters uh, to uh, to uh, uh, to keep that basically blank. All right. And lastly, we only have one uh, one other set of commands we have to put in here. We're going to enable all of the operations uh, uh, the operations buttons uh, except equals. Uh, sorry, pardon me. Operations decimal and uh, and negative number buttons. Pardon. Okay. I knew I was using something and I hit that particular point and I've double typed a bunch of stuff here. All right. So, uh, so enabling buttons is quite simple. We're just going to go figure out first off which buttons we need to fit, we need to sort out. So we need buttons 18, 17, 16, and 15, as well as 10 and 11. Those eleven dot enable equals true. Double checking fifteen through eighteen that I need to do. Yeah, there we are. Button fifteen dot enable equals true. 16 equals true. Now the reason why we're turning on all of these buttons is that there are certain circumstances throughout our code where, such as right up right up here, if someone had only partially entered in a calculation, um, and, and uh, had canceled af after, uh, sorry, canceled while they were entering the second part of the uh, of our equation. For example, they went five times, and then they never entered the four. Uh, these buttons, those operation buttons, would be disabled, and so we just want to turn those ones back on. So that's what these, uh, sorry, these last four are, and also the two um, special buttons, the decimal and the negative number button, can only be used once. So if they have already been used. This makes sure that they are available for use once again. All right, so that pretty much concludes everything for the clear button. It's quite a small little portion of this program, uh, but that's all the logic that there, that's contained in it. So thank you very much, and I will see you for uh, the next portion um, of the tutorial in which in which we will tackle the equals button, which is going to be uh, probably the by far the most complex of all of the uh, uh, of, of all the tutorials I'm going to be running on this one. So uh, keep an eye out for that one, and I'll talk to you then. All right, have a good day.